Hi, my name is Rick Fassett and I'm a technical marketing engineer in the test and product division of Mentor, a Siemens business. In this video series, I'll be explaining and demonstrating how the test and tools automate and simplify the process of reporting comprehensive test coverage information of complex SOC designs. Now this is the first part of the series in which I will just give an overview of the tools capabilities. In parts two and three, I'll demonstrate in the tool how these capabilities are used when working at the core level of a design and also at the SOC level. So let's start by taking a moment to review what the challenges are of accounting for test coverage in large SOC designs. So first, users typically rely on ATBG to provide the final test coverage report for a design. That makes sense because ATBG uses fault models to represent the possible faults and scan patterns test the majority of these faults and the fault simulation provides an unambiguous test coverage number at the end of the process. Part of the problem though with this is that with some faults associated with DFT instruments, for example, maybe memory bus controllers, logic bus controllers, on-chip clock controllers, those faults aren't tested by scan patterns nor can they be accurately categorized when reporting them. And as SOC designs get bigger and consist of more and more physical design cores, it has become increasingly more common to use hierarchical DFT techniques. This means that individual wrapped cores are tested in isolation from each other, resulting in many coverage reports. And each wrapped core operates in at least two different test modes, for example, in-test and X-test. So that produces se separate coverage reports as well. So you can end up with multiple coverage reports for each core multiplied by tens or even hundreds of core instances. So the challenge is how to merge all these different sources of test coverage information, be they DFT instruments not tested by ATBG or separate hierarchical cores into a single comprehensive coverage report. The solution we provide is the test and shell that unifies all these separate pieces. So think of Tess and Shell as a platform, a single tool that enables you to launch whatever DFT step is needed in your flow. So one of the key unifying features is the TSDB or Tess and Shell database. Tesson is able to store all the information associated with each DFT step into the TSDB and automatically retrieve that information at a later stage in the flow. That means for DFT instruments inserted by Tesson, such as LBIST, MBIST, built-in self-repair, IJTAG, LPCT, and OCCs for some examples, we can automatically categorize some faults that we know will be detected by implication or DI in a statistics report and forward that information onto the A2BG step for more accurate results. Some of these faults might be A2BG untestable or AU instead. In that case, it provides an even more detailed subclass that points to the reason why the fault is AU. For example, it might appear as AU.LBIST, for instance, to indicate it's related to LBIST logic, not tested by ATPG. And in the case of hierarchical designs that produce many coverage reports from different cores and test modes, Tessent knows where in the TSDB those coverage results are, uh, where they're stored, and merges them into a single coverage number for the entire SOC. Here's a quick review of how DFT instruments not tested by ATBG are handled. For a detailed demonstration of these capabilities, please be sure to view part two of this video series. In that video, I'll invoke the tool on a sample design and show how it works. What I'm showing right now in this statistics report on the right reflects the fault status of a RAP core just after passing all the ATBG related DRCs but prior to generating any scan patterns. So based on just the setup information, Tessent is able to find fault status information for instruments such as MBIS controllers and categorize some of those faults as DI, which you can see highlighted in yellow. Now, other faults associated with instruments such as OCC, IJTAG, and LPCT are not tested by implication nor can they be tested by ATPG, so they're categorized as AU, ATPG untestable. The benefits of categorizing these before patterns are generated are first, you get credit for DI faults, which accurately results in higher coverage, and second, identifying DI and AU faults early 
eliminates them from the population that HBG has to work on uh, and therefore reduces HBG runtime. Now, when it comes to merging the results of multiple cores and test modes at the SOC level, Tessent knows where all the coverage information is stored because it's all organized in the TSDB. It then reads in test mode coverage of all the cores and all potential hierarchical levels within those cores and then merges those coverage numbers with the results of X test mode at the SOC level, resulting in a single comprehensive number that represents the results of testing all the separate cores and modes. And it also gives a detailed breakdown of those results based on fault categories and hierarchical levels. For a more detailed demonstration of what this SOC level fault merging sequence looks like, please view part three of this video series. In that video, I will take a sample design and show the steps used to read all the fault results from the TSDB and merge them together. So in summary, Test and Shell simplifies and automates coverage reporting. The test coverage information for Tessent inserted DFT instruments is fed forward to the A2BG step from non-A2BG steps in the flow. Test coverage information for multiple test modes and separate cores is merged with the SOC level results. And then the resulting coverage report is it's more accurate because we can include coverage results from non-A2BG steps. We achieve it, we get to that point with less A2BG runtime because some faults can be pre-categorized. And to simplify the debugging, we can provide detailed breakdowns based on fault subcategories and hierarchies. So thank you for viewing this video, and please be sure to view parts two and three of the series, which go into a more detailed demonstration of these capabilities in the tool with the sample design.